Hello magical one, how are you doing? I hope you have a wonderful week so far. And finally in Germany the weather is giving 100% autumn vibes. It's cold, it's getting dark so soon, it's raining and I really really love it. And because it is this time of the year where we are drawn more into our homes again, I thought I would make a video this week that you can simply listen to. So maybe there is some creative work that you need to do. Maybe there are still some household chores that you need to do. You need to do some cleansing at home. And spoiler alert, this is what we are going to talk about today. But yeah. I hope it is fun for you to listen to this video. You of course can just watch me talking, but it is more of a talkative video. So I will sit down and kind of have a chat with you. And I personally love listening to audiobooks and podcasts in autumn and winter. I just love when it's like cold outside, it's dark early and you can just curl up in a blanket with a cup of tea and simultaneously learn something new. That's what I love, but since you are watching this or listening to this, I would guess that you love it too and you are eager to learn something new about witchcraft and magic. And with that being said, whether you are new to cleansing magic or you already have experience, I really did my best with the research. I really tried to include examples, my own experience, and again did an extensive research to really give you a good understanding of what cleansing magic is. And I also tried to include things that I didn't hear anywhere else because I also was at a point where I started to study cleansing magic a few years ago. So I really hope it gives you a good understanding of cleansing magic. So again, I think this will be a longer video. I will try to make it as extensive as I can, but there is just so much to cleansing magic and you would think that cleansing magic is that pretty easy topic, right? But I really hope this video gives you a good understanding. And if I'm looking down, I have my notes here because your girl did her research and I just need my notes because otherwise I will drift off and probably tell you about something completely different. But again, I did my own research. I have my own personal gnosis, my own experiences. I'm not saying that what I'm sharing here is the one and only truth. Please, as always, do your own research and just see what resonates for you because that's what's making witchcraft fun, in my opinion, is like to really try things out and then have this aha moment when things actually work for you. So with that being said, grab your favorite mug, get some tea or coffee and let's talk about cleansing magic. So what exactly is cleansing magic? So cleansing magic is the practice of removing or letting go of unwanted or stagnant energies from your objects, from your spaces and even yourself. Because otherwise this stagnant or unwanted energy could have some impact on your everyday life. It could interfere with your magical practice and even have some interference with the spells you are trying to do. Now there is a difference between cleansing and purification and I will try to explain it with the example of your home because I think that's the easiest one to explain the difference. So imagine you cleaning your home. So cleansing is kind of the everyday tasks that you do from keeping your house to turn into a total mess. Like it's the small everyday actions that you do to just keep it clutter free, to keep it like basically clean on a daily basis. So it's like taking away that mark that was like sitting on your desk. It's like removing your art supplies and putting them where they belong after you did an extensive drawing session. Like you see small everyday actions to basically keep your house clean. Now purification on the other hand is this deep cleansing. And if I had to differentiate cleansing and purification, it's like the degree to which you are cleaning something. So let's say purification, for example, is you take all the plants from your windowsills and 
you use that water, you use that essential oil and you basically deep clean that windowsill to remove the dust, to remove that stagnant energy. You open the windows like to let it outside. Now another example could be you cleaning your altar and it's not only putting all the items where they belong but you physically take them you cleanse that space with some water, with some essential oils, maybe with some smoke, whatever you like and prefer. And you also deep clean your tools, your crystals, whatever there is on your altar. So I usually try to do the deep cleaning once a week, but I'm a busy witch, I'm human. So of course I also cannot always keep that promise, but I try to keep it as dust and clutter free as I can, because I just really can see the differences. But again, this is not like a one time fits all kind of thing. Do your own thing, basically, like see what works for you. Maybe, I don't know, you just like to do this deep cleaning once a month. I don't know, like see whatever resonates for you, find your own rhythm and really try to feel into the energies. Like see when something feels stuck or unwanted and then I know it's also kind of time for a deep cleanse and I will kind of choose the degree of measurements that I'm taking. Like is it only cleaning my windowsills or is it really like taking everything off and like cleansing and clearing everything like I will just go with my intuition and with my feeling with that. So before we go deeper into cleansing magic and talk about what it can do for you as a witch let's just briefly talk about what cleansing magic cannot do for you because cleansing magic cannot magically change your life overnight. It's like not that instant fix to problems that you may have in your life. And no matter if you're doing the physical cleaning or if you are doing the energetically cleansing and clearing, again, we will talk about that in like a moment, but cleansing magic will not remove physical elements from your life or change the nature of something. Let's say, for example, you have an unwanted spirit in your home and you use cleansing magic so you can kind of drive that unwanted spirit outside of your home, but it will not remove the unwanted spirit itself. Cleansing magic will also not remove illnesses from your body. It will not remove memories or emotions from your body, nor will it remove that annoying coworker from your workplace. And it will also not miraculously move you from one situation to another. Like for example, getting you out of that job that you really, really hate. But if I had to explain it, it's like it could give you the motivation to kind of take that aligned action and get out your CV to find that new job right so it's like not getting you out of the job but it can help you have the motivation to take inspired action and then yeah change that situation so that is something that is really really important so please don't rely on cleansing magic and see it as this instant fix to your problems because that's not what cleansing magic is going to do it's not even the purpose of cleansing magic but just putting that as a huge disclaimer in here before we move on. So now let's talk about why you should do cleansing magic as a witch. And for that we are going to use three categories, which is objects, spaces and yourself. And let's just start with the objects. And just as a side note, the principle that kind of I live by for all of these and what resonates with me is that everything in this universe is energy. Everything is made out of energy, energy is neutral and energy can never be destroyed, it only changes its form. So with that being said, why should you cleanse your objects? And objects could be things that you buy new in a store, it could be tools that you buy for your witchcraft practice and we are also going to talk about thrifted things because that's what we love here, that's what we are doing here. And as you can see, this is my newest edition. It's this really huge picture that I really love, but I have no space for it, but it was so cheap on sale. So I have been eyeing this for like the longest time. So yeah, that's what we are going to talk about as well. All right, so let's say you buy new things for your home or your witchcraft practice. 
and when you are buying new things you just want to make sure that these objects are kind of in their neutral state like you don't know their touch points until they got to you like the factory they were manufactured in like the sellers and it's like not negative energy I always go with like unwanted energies because I try not to label things anymore because it basically just creates something that is like not a universal law in my opinion like energy is neutral and with our experiences and opinions and our past and our expectations we basically just create something like we put this label on top like good bad but that's not energy and we also force a moral on these kind of things if we do that so i always go with like unwanted energies and you want to make sure that the items you bring into your home that of course you use in your witchcraft practice are kind of in their reset state if that makes sense and let me give you an example imagine you are buying a new smartphone and you're really excited you take it out of the package and then you kind of turn it on and it's already full with like multiples and hundreds of photos and videos and memo notes and whatever there is like contact numbers on that phone so that would be weird right and that's basically how I see that with objects and tools that I bring into my home. I want to make sure that I reset them into their neutral state. But again, cleansing magic will not kind of get rid of that item or like get rid of that whole energy. It's basically resetting the item to its like purest. And I hope like I don't really like that word but in like its most natural energy so then you can go on and put your intentions into it put your kind of energy into it so it can serve you in its best way possible right so I as I already said personally really love thrifting I just love to be environmentally conscious and there's just so much stuff already in our world so I really try to be conscious with the things that I buy but I sometimes have this phase where I thrift a lot and I just I don't know it's just as like I need more fresh energy so I try to keep it in balance like I don't know sometimes I really feel the need that I just need new clothes that are just mine and have not been worn before but that's just a personal thing so I can see what resonates and what it feels like for you but yeah I really really love thrifting which means that I bring items into my home that have been passed on before maybe for generations or that basically have accumulated a lot of different energies right so let's say I find this really beautiful necklace with a beautiful gemstone and it belonged to this lady that was wearing it every single day of her life and she was wearing it when she was happy when she was falling in love when she was having a fight when she was angry and basically what I want to do is to reset this energy so it can kind of attune and align with my energy so by properly cleansing that item I make sure that I set it to its original energy state if that makes sense and as I already said I stopped labeling things with good or bad as much as I can but let's say I go to the thrift store and I see an item that I like but it just does not feel right like I feel this really weird feeling in my stomach my stomach literally tightens it just it just feels not right then I would not buy that item and that's kind of my preventive measure to kind of reduce the chance to bring in a lot of unwanted energy into my home and kind of have that energy contamination in my home like I really try to reduce the possibility of that and then there is also your tools that you as a witch use in your witchcraft practice that you use on a daily or regular basis. So it's your crystals, your wand, maybe you have some jewelry that you use, maybe it's that beautiful chalice that you use in your practice. And let's say you are using a tool to do a banishing ritual one day and the next day you want to make a love spell, for example. 
Now think about it like that. You have a camera and you go outside to have a shooting in the sunset and your camera is set completely for that sunset. The exposure, the ISO, everything is optimized for that sunset shooting and the next day you want to go outside and film at midday. So that will not work. The settings are completely off and it will not be like good pictures basically, like it will not work. So this is basically the maintenance that we talked about before so that your tools don't influence your practice like your spell work and can support you in the best way possible. And now I found that really interesting because my shamanic teacher always told us that we have to become this hollow bone in order to really help our client like we have to kind of empty ourselves from our expectations and our ego basically right and this is kind of how i see my witchcraft tools like i have a connection to them but i know that they kind of try to function in a way where they can support me and that's how i try to maintain them so it's just like this really really cool relationship that I have with my tools and I hope this example kind of made it a little bit clearer because I always found it hard when someone said just clean your tools because and I was like yeah but why and I think now it's like how I understand it and was able to build up a better relationship to the things that I use in my practice. So now let's talk about why you should clean your spaces and it is because you are probably doing work like spell work for example in your spaces that simply require a clear mind, focus and intention but a cluttered space can lead to a cluttered mind and I can write a song about that like I need a clean desk to properly function and if I don't have a clean surrounding then I can basically not concentrate and I have like ADHD and autism and it's like this weird push and pull like I really need it but I cannot properly maintain it so I'm always doing my best to maintain it and when it's like turning chaos then it's like I cannot do anything like I need to clean I even get angry when it's not clean and we just came home from our vacation so there's like baggage lying around we need to wash a lot of things and it's making me so nervous and angry that it's not clean so I can write a song about why the spaces need to be clean I could also not do any spell work in that surrounding because for example to me when I try to do a spell in a cluttered surrounding I will not concentrate like I will just try to rush through it and it will not have any effect at all so I learned over the years how important it is to have a clear space. So you really want to make sure that you have a clear space, a clear surrounding, especially as a witch that is doing some spell work so that you can channel and direct your energy efficiently. So by regularly cleansing your environment, you make sure that your surroundings are conductive of your magical practice and that you are able to have clearer intentions and a more powerful ritual for example. Because what do we do as witches? As witches we direct energy with an intention so that a certain outcome that we want can manifest. So now let me tell you something about my own personal cleansing magic experiences because when I do my big big purification and I think I already said it it's like usually twice a year around spring and usually around Samhain something big and beautiful manifests in my life. Now that could be money like chunks of money that could be a new friendship that could be a new opportunity whatever it is it usually always instantly happens after I did the big, big cleansing. Now, I'm a really, really big fan of Feng Shui because I do think that Feng Shui and cleansing magic do resemble each other a lot. There is a lot of elements that are, I would even say, the same. So make sure if you are into cleansing magic that you check out Feng Shui as well. But Feng Shui is basically creating a surrounding that is supportive of your manifestations because by creating that surrounding, that environment and using elements that can help you 
be subconsciously reminded of the things that you manifest, it's really creating that beautiful supportive environment. It's also using cardinal directions and energy grids, for example. So Feng Shui is making sure that you basically utilize the most of like the, and I now say it, the positive energies in your surroundings. Like there is so much more to Feng Shui, but there is different directions in your home that you could utilize. For example, there is a wealth place in your home there is a hard place in your home and by using these kind of directions and places you could integrate them in your witchcraft practice like there is a direction in your home for wealth so you could build an abundance altar and do your spell work or your rituals there and making sure that it's always clutter free and there is no stagnant energy because energy wants to flow and for example wealth energy is the constant flow of income and outcome and you're just representing that. So I do think that is really, really interesting and I try to incorporate that as much as I can into my witchcraft practice. And I do think that all of these big manifestations were happening after I did the big, big purification because cleansing that space kind of made way for the manifestation that were already on their way, but I may have blocked them out in some way. And by like really cleansing my environment because what's inside is outside, so your outside always reflects your inside, by kind of tidying up my outside, I also tidied up my inside, if that makes sense. And that's why I kind of allowed these manifestations to come in. But as I said in the beginning, I did the inner work, I took aligned action. So cleansing matching is like not this instant fix, it will not magically turn your life around. I think it's a really beautiful, supportive and protective measure to take as a witch. Okay, so now let's talk about why you should cleanse yourself. And just a disclaimer, this has nothing to do with your body hygiene per se, but to me cleansing myself is like this self-care ritual that I love doing daily and I will talk about that later on, like how I do that. But let's say I have a day and I'm left emotionally overloaded from these situations. I may have had arguments. I'm like angry because of that and I cannot focus. I have this clutter in my mind. So these situations, as we probably all can relate, are natural and usually they go away on their own. Like if we have a good night's sleep, then the next day is like looking different. But usually when I can feel that something is like cluttered in my mind, I tend to do some shaking, like some body embodied work, this kind of thing, and I feel better. But there are situations as a witch, we do certain activities that may require more cleaning. For example, communicating with the dead. And in shamanism, for example, if you do extractions, you use your hands or you use tools and you would wash your hands afterwards to make sure you don't take anything from the client that you just extracted from the energy body. And our teacher once told us that when he was starting out, he did an extraction on a client and he really felt off afterwards. Like he was not feeling like himself and he cleansed himself with smoke, he washed himself with water, and then he could feel that he was like going back to his normal self. So this kind of concept is not only exclusive in witchcraft, it is present in many different spiritual practices as well. But as you can probably tell, if you are not able to focus, to have a clear intention, to channel your energy on a specific purpose, it can interfere with your witchcraft practice, right? Make it difficult to perform that spell that you anticipated and to perform divination, to communicate with a deity, um, to just name a few. Because yes, it affects our awareness and our ability to use our senses. And as you can probably tell, all of what I just said, like feeling maybe cluttered, not being able to concentrate, all of that is a natural state. But please always make sure that you also check in with a doctor and don't just rely on cleansing magic and you take out the broom or you take the shower and that's it. Please make sure that you can exclude like these kind of situations and that it's nothing different. 
So if you are preparing a ritual or a spell, then this is basically the other side of the coin. So let's say you are inviting over some of your friends and you are preparing the food, but you didn't wash your hands all day long or you just did some garden work and you didn't clean your hands. And we all know how our hands look like if we did garden work, right? So you would not serve them the food that you may have made with these exact hands, right? You may not even make the food with these hands. And it's the same when you are working with a deity. So why would you do that to a deity if you would not do it to a friend? Like using the hands that you didn't wash the whole day long or you used for garden work and then preparing some food or offerings, right? So basically by cleansing yourself before doing any spell work or rituals, you are trying to present yourself and your intentions as clear and direct as possible. And it really helps you to make sure that you are in the right mindset and energetical state to perform that ritual. So it has the effect that you want and it does not backfire. And it really allows you to yeah, approach your practice with much more clarity and focus basically. All right, so now that you have a pretty good understanding, hopefully about cleansing magic and why you should cleanse and what cleansing magic cannot do for you, let's talk about some cleansing methods. And I try to pick some that don't require a lot. So don't feel like you need to do that extensive smoke cleansing with sage or palo santo just because everyone out there is telling you to do that. You don't need to do that. There is like many beautiful alternatives and I usually try to keep it simple. So I will share that with you. Of course, these lists are like not complete. You can add many, many more cleansing methods to them. This is just my experiences that worked for me. So feel free to create your own list over time. And as always, have fun experimenting, try out different methods and see what works for you. And what I really want you to do, if you are new to this, even if you have been practicing cleansing magic for a while and you may not do this, what I want you to do before you do any cleansing magic, and it does not really matter if it is a space, an object or yourself, really feel into, let's say, that object, that wand that you bought or thrifted. Really feel into the energy before cleansing because this will really allow you to train your intuition to see if there is any stagnant or unwanted energy. You will develop that feeling if it needs cleansing and how it feels when it needs cleansing and how it feels afterwards. So you will be able to tell this kind of difference before and after cleansing. So next time if you walk into that new apartment or you take that new tool that you want for your witchcraft practice, really try to feel, hold it in your hands. If you cannot hold it, if you're standing in a room, just close your eyes and see what feelings show up, what else shows up and try to feel it with your senses. And then again, do it after you did the cleansing to see the difference in the energies. So now let's talk about methods for cleansing your space. And I already said it, but probably the most recommended method for cleansing your space is by using smoke from herbs like sage, palo santo or cedar. But I'm here to tell you it all comes down to your preferences. Like you don't have to use smoke just because everyone else tells you to. There is even many reasons why you should not use it. Like maybe you are allergic or maybe you are not even allowed to use it in your space, in your home. And there is a lot of alternatives that you could use that we are going to talk about in a second. But I anyways found that using herbs that are local to me, like rosemary or lavender, work much better in my practice. The result is much more powerful than if I use herbs that were imported like palo santo or sage because it did not survive in my fairy garden. But yeah, you don't have to do that. I also usually use some resin that I may found on a spruce or something like that. That is also something that I really love, but I don't use smoke a lot of the times because I have a dog and she doesn't really like the smell. 
And so I would only do that twice a year, as I said, when I do the big, big purifications. And keep in mind that sage is kind of resetting all of the energy. It's like not only getting rid of unwanted energy, it's like also getting rid of all the other energies. So I'm saying it like now the good energies that may reside in your home. So keep that in mind and that's why I usually only do that twice a year to really use these times and I think I already said it around spring and so on to just really reset my home and allow for something new and fresh. So I would also recommend if you move somewhere completely new to use smoke. Like this is one of the cases that I always use smoke because I don't want any energies in there lingering around. Like a person lived there, they were having fights, they were having fun. Like I don't want any of that. I would just want a neutral space and like really give it that reset. So what I do if I move somewhere completely new, first thing before I put in any furniture, I go there if it's of course possible and you are allowed to do that. Use smoke and start from the entrance door and then go into every room and always clockwise and just cleanse every single room and really open all the windows. So like all of this energy that was present from like the people that lived there before to really flow outside. So this is something that I always do because I just can really feel a difference after doing that. So as I said, there are some alternatives to using smoke to cleanse your home and one of them is using cleansing sprays. I love cleansing sprays because they are so easy. You can make them yourself. You can add the herbs that you would like to be reflected in the spray. So you can bring that intention and energy into your home or a specific room. You can buy them. And my favorite cleansing spray, and this is not sponsored, is by Primavera. It's called the Space Clearing Spray. And this is just the best space clearing spray that I have and that I know of because you can really feel the difference and I would usually when I cleanse a room with a spray I spray where probably most energy gets stuck like the corners and every single corner and every single cardinal direction in the air and also like in the middle of the room so this is usually how I do it and it's so simple and it just really smells so refreshing and again this is like what I connect to purification is like this really fresh aromatic smell of herbs. Now sound is another really really beautiful way to cleanse your home. This could be for example a little bell. I have a few bells that I love using or a singing bowl could be something that is really amazing as well because what it does is scattering energy so you can move it around. But you could also use your voice if this is something that you like. You could do some chanting and chanting is amazing because of the repetition of words and the breathing and like the rhythm. It's really perfect to direct some energy and you could simply sing out energy out of your windows and direct it out of a window. So this is something that I have been experimenting with in like the past few months because I really, really love chanting. I love using my voice, my breath for my practice or in my practice. And maybe while you are already singing or chanting to get rid of unwanted energy and to direct it out of your home, you could use your body as well. Like using movement of your body is also something that I really love. You could clap in the hands, which again scatters energy. Same with stamping your feet on the ground. And you could just make that really, really cool singing and dancing ritual out of a cleansing of a room or your home. So cleansing magic can be fun as well, as you can see. So as you may have seen in my Witch's Guide to Sowen video last year, I have a broom that I made myself and I really love using that to cleanse my home, to cleanse corners of rooms where I feel like there is like a lot of stuck energy or maybe under a bed. And I can really visualize the branches of the broom entangling with the stuck energy and like grabbing this unwanted energy so I can then shake it out of my door, out of my window. So this is also something that I really, really love. So yeah, this is one of my favorite ways because it's just so much fun. And I basically feel like Mother Holle 
like with her pillows if you know that fairy tale. Now of course cleansing your home physically with like water and cleaning supplies that in the best case scenario you made yourself because that way they are less harmful to you and the environment is the number one way to go about your home. Like honestly, I think if I did all of the above, if I used rosemary and lavender, if I used my bell to cleanse my altar spaces or something like that, if I used my broom, that would be cool, but it would not have the same effect as if I really did the deep cleansing with some water and my cleaning supply that I did. Maybe I use some orange peels, maybe some apple cider vinegar. I love using essential oils to really refresh my home. But I really think that it would not have the same effect if I only go on with like all the other tools. And always keep in mind that the cleaner your home is, the less likely it is for unwanted energies or spirits to get stuck in there. I think that is something that is so important as well. All right, so now let's talk about the methods to clean your tools or your objects. And the first thing that I do whenever I buy something new or I thrifted something, I wash it with some cold water. And when it's possible, I just hold it under running tap water. This could also be a stream maybe behind your home or something like that, where you can put physically your items into the cold stream. Make sure that they don't float away. Maybe put them in a little sachet or something like that. But yeah, this is basically my number one method, how I cleanse my tools whenever possible. Be careful because there are certain crystals, for example, that you are not allowed to put into water but usually I always give everything a really good cleanse with water and soap if possible to just make sure it has this fresh energy. Now of course you can also use smoke to cleanse your items, your objects, you can use sound like frequencies, you can use a bell again, you could use your voice to clean an item and sing to the item to clean it so the energy scatters and you can kind of drive it outside of your home. And what I found interesting that I learned in my shamanic practitioner's training is using your breath to really push something out of an item. I never heard that before, but this is something that I do sometimes when I feel like there is a lot of like stuck energy, like, you know, a really like a ball of wool, basically. <laughs> it's how it feels like to me that I'm pushing out with my breath. So this is also something that you could do. Now you can also use sunlight or moonlight. I do that occasionally to cleanse items or to charge them. This is also something that works perfectly fine. And again, there is like many, many more on this list, but I love to keep it practical. I just, yeah love to keep it simple and this is basically what I do but make sure to let me know how you cleanse your items. So last but not least let's talk about methods to cleanse yourself and I already said it to me cleansing myself every single day is a self-care ritual so I love it very much and my daily ritual to cleanse myself is while taking a shower. So while I'm in the shower, I basically just visualize how the water carries away everything that I no longer want to carry around with me. Maybe it was something specific from that day. Maybe it's just like something in general that I feel like is ready to let go of. And I just really love this method because you visualize something and I usually have a white clear light that I visualize that is like coming with the water but you have the water so it's like not only a visualization but it has an effect and I think that makes it really easy. So this is something that I usually do every single day and I really really love it. I also listen to high frequency music or maybe some affirmations and that is just how I enjoy taking my shower. Maybe I'm using a candle, some essential oils that I put somewhere and yeah, I just love it very, very much. Very, very much. Very, very much. <laughs> So another method is taking a ritual bath and you probably already heard about that, but it is basically adding, for example, herbs like rosemary or 
lavender, maybe rose petals to your bath water. Also Himalayan salt could be something amazing or milk, whatever it is that you integrate into your ritual or that supports the ritual, your intention. I also love making teas from organic tea and then pouring that into my bath water. Like I just love hibiscus, so I usually put hibiscus tea into my bath water if I do one of these ritual baths. So that is something that is also like really, really good if you have a bath tube. So another favorite way of mine to cleanse myself is to ground myself. And you could basically just take off your shoes and walk bare feet on the ground, on grass, on sand or in the forest and what I usually love doing is to visualize again like visualizing is something that I really love doing and I would visualize roots coming out of my root chakra and my feet and I would connect to the center of the earth like I always say I'm connecting to mother earth which to me is this orange light ball and then I would also connect to source energy above, so roots or little antennas would come out of my crown chakra and connecting me to source energy because as above, so below, so we are connected in this kind of cycle and I would just release everything through the roots and kind of take in all of that pure bliss and love and light through my crown chakra. So this is something that I really love doing and I can really feel now when I'm grounded or not grounded. So again, everything takes practice. Don't feel disencouraged if something does not work for the first time. We are witches, so it's like trial and error and yeah, just keep doing it. If you feel like it helps you, it has like a calming effect on you, it helps you focus. So yeah, another favorite way of mine to cleanse myself. So to finish this video, let's briefly talk about when you should cleanse because I know this is something that people are interested in as well. And I already gave you a lot of examples. So maybe by now you have some ideas and impulses when you want to cleanse, when it feels right for you. Maybe you also have some impulses how you should cleanse. And again, keep doing this little experiment. See how something feels before cleansing and after cleansing to really train that kind of cleansing magic muscle and see when it is time to cleanse. And just another thing, because I do think it is possible to over cleanse. And I know this sounds contradictory to everything we just talked about, but I will give you an example and I hope that makes it clear. So I love Japanese tea. And I have this beautiful brown little Japanese teapot made from clay. And I love drinking green tea. So green tea has this really amazing benefit that the residues of green tea keep putting themselves on the surface, like on the inside of the teapot. So by now, you know, I'm bad at explaining, but just bear with me. So the more tea you drink, the more little particles of the green tea will put themselves on the inside of the teapot. And with time, it develops this really healthy milieu and this really healthy surface inside of your teapot. So it's actually beneficial the more tea you drink. So I hope this is like already telling you where we are going. So let's say, for example, you are working with the gnomes in your home and you develop this really beautiful energy in a corner of your room and it's this trustworthy energy that you don't want to get rid of then you would not go there and cleanse like everything excessively because you want to keep that energy hence the relationship with the gnomes right or let's say you work with a deity and you build this really beautiful altar and you have this energy flowing there and just does not feel unwanted or weird you would not want to get rid of that energy right because it's kind of the connection to the deity so i hope you know what i'm trying to tell here you don't have to cleanse everything 100% all the time. If it feels right, if you like an energy, keep it. You don't have to cleanse it. So just keep that in mind. If something feels right for you, this is always what I'm telling you. If it resonates with you, if it feels right, just keep it and appreciate it because like the little Japanese teapot showed you, you don't need to get rid of all 
the energy all the time. And to just wrap that up, at some point my boyfriend cleansed this teapot with some soap and I was so angry. So <laughs> yeah, moral of the story, sometimes built up energy is good and it's even supportive. But yeah, here are some situations when I would probably cleanse objects, spaces or myself. So we already talked about that, but I would cleanse the tools, the space where I do the spell work and myself to a certain degree to kind of prevent ritual pollution before and after I do any spell work or working with a deity or working with a spirit. So I also already said that, but before moving somewhere new into a new apartment or a home, I always cleanse and clear everything with sage to really get rid of all the energies in there. And in Germany, we anyways usually clean the home when we move out and we do an extensive cleaning when we move into somewhere new. That's just a thing we all do, like cleansing and clearing the windows, the windowsill, just everything in there will be cleansed. I also try to cleanse on full moons because to me a full moon is just about this energy of releasing, of cleansing and this is just what feels right for me but I of course cannot always keep it up but I try to cleanse every single full moon if possible. Then again if I thrifted something, if I bought something new I will make sure to yeah, just cleanse and clear it with running tap water with some maybe sage or rosemary something like that because I don't know who touched it and I just want to make sure that yeah, it is in its neutral energy state. Of course, when I just feel like that there is some unwanted or stuck energy in myself, in my space, in my surroundings or my tools, I will make sure to cleanse as well. And again, if I feel like my surroundings just leave me confused, like there is clutter everywhere and I know for sure that it is because of the clutter that I feel confused or like foggy or something like that, then I will make sure to yeah, cleanse, take out my broom, but again, check in with your doctor to exclude anything before you take out that broom, before you take out your cleansing supplies, to just be sure. Also, if I feel like something wants cleansing, and again, if you do the tarot, then you will probably know what that feels like. If a deck wants to be cleansed, it will make it 100% clear and it will not work with you anymore until you gave it a proper cleanse. And I would also cleanse if there were guests in my home or people that I don't know, like maybe some people that did some repairing or something like that. I usually cleanse the floor, of course, and I also do some other cleansing to make sure that all is outside of my home that I don't want inside. All right, so wow, we talked so much about cleansing magic and I told you there is so much more to it than you would think, but I really hope it is a good starting point for you if you are new to this. I hope it could give you a good understanding about cleansing magic. Maybe if you have been doing the cleansing magic, tell you something new that you didn't know before. And yeah, again, remember that cleansing magic as all the other practices is really deeply personal do the trial and error find the ways that work for you and yeah let me know your stories in the comments down below about the cleansing magic i'm always really really happy when i can read your comments and thank you so much if you have been watching until here if you have been listening until here it really really means the world to me and if you did, let's be friends, subscribe to the channel. It really, really helps me out a lot. And I don't know how often I said really right now, but it really helps me out a lot. It supports the channel. It helps me focusing on doing more of this research, which I love to provide you with more information that you can hopefully integrate into your own witchcraft practice. Also share the video to someone who may need to hear this. And yeah, we will hang out again next week. So I hope you have a good week and see you then. Bye bye. <laughs>